let's talk about something uh, a little more serious in virtual mm -hmm. reality gaming. Mm -hmm. It is a game, though, a uh, an indie game that was a finalist for the Independent Games Festival of Excellence uh, in uh, the category Narrative and Excellence in Audio, an honorable mention for Grand Prize. It's called That Dragon Cancer. Mm -hmm. You watched the documentary. Twice. Twice? Yeah. I tried to play the game many times, and I, I no, I, That's why I didn't... I'm sorry. That's why I didn't play the game because it, the documentary just made it's me sad. very. Joining us yeah. right now, Ryan and Amy Green, uh, the makers of the game, and David Osset and Malika Zuhali, the makers of the documentary. There they all are. Nice to see you all. Hi guys. Hi. Hi. Schlossen here, who's one of the co-creators of the game, also. Poor little Schlossen gets stuck in the back row there. I, <laughs> sorry, Schlossen. <laughs> so, how did this all start? You want to start with how the game started? Well, just the whole... Give, give us the genesis of the mm -hmm, game mm -hmm. and the doc. Does the documentary came first? Um, the game came first. So we had uh, a son who had terminal cancer, but he lived much longer than the doctors expected him to live. So he was supposed to live maybe up to four more months, and he lived actually three more years after that. Wow. So, yeah, somewhere in the middle, we, we kind of realized that we had adjusted to living with and raising a child that was expected to die. And it gave us time to start to think artistically about how we could express what that's like to love a child that you know you're probably going to lose. And Ryan was a game maker, and he partnered with Josh Larson, and they talked about how they could communicate this this process of raising a child with with terminal cancer as a game. What What was your uh, a goal, Ryan? Were you trying to kind of share your experience so other people could experience it to support other parents in your situation? You know, I think uh, if I'm being honest, I was hoping that we were documenting a miracle, you know, that we were being part of this story that was larger than us and um, that Joel was still with us and Joel was beating every expectations. And so, uh, I mean, I'm a, I'm a video game designer and, and Josh is a video game designer and that's what we do. And so, how we express ourselves is through the video game medium. Right. Um, and so this was just the form that that we could take to um, to tell our story, to to be journalists of our life, um, and, and that's what this was. Um, you know, we thought we were telling one story, and unfortunately, we were telling another story. And, and Joel passed away about an hour in, or about a year into development. Um, and so and so, you know. There's the story I want to tell, but the story that was being told. Right. And, and the result is the story that was told through our life. Did Joel know you were doing this? He didn't. Um, he, although he died when he was the age of five, the chemotherapy and radiation he got as part of his treatment really delayed him. So he developmentally was probably more like a one-year-old. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't even think he really knew that he had cancer. Yeah. Even. So he didn't know really that we were making the game or even that he was dying. You did have three extra blessed years, which is, uh, you know, you're very fortunate in that regard. But it's still, I, as a parent, I, th I can't think of anything harder uh, to go through. And, and I'm sure my reaction is not alone. This is a very difficult experience to experience for myself. Yeah. I mean, we're asking for a lot of trust from people to, like, go on this story with us. And I think that's the hardest thing is that um, it reflects... Our story reflects the is like a manifestation of the fear that all of us as parents have, yeah. um, and all of us who potentially could be parents. And so I think um, asking people to face that fear and asking people to find beauty in the midst of suffering like this um, is a really tough thing to do. And our hope is that uh, you know we wouldn't ask people to do it unless we believed that there was something beautiful to be found through sharing our story. And I think we, we knew we were risking something by loving Joel as much as we did. As soon as he was terminal, you realized like, oh wow, like the more we love him, the more we stand to lose. Right. And I think we know that for the people who play our game, if they're willing to invest in loving Joel, that's a risk for them. But the people who've played it really believe that they it adds something to their life, it changes them, it makes them <clears throat> think about their relationships and value them more, kind of like it yeah. made us value our lives more. The game is available for Mac and Windows on Steam. It's uh, it's under ten dollars, nine eighty nine, and it's also available on uh, Ouya and Forge TV. Let me talk to Malika and David because you made a documentary 
uh, thank you for playing. How did you find out about all this? We read a brief description of the video game on a website called Kill Screen Daily that's just had a very brief summary of what Ryan and, and Josh were working on at the time. And I think just based on that, we were really intrigued by what making a game about this experience would be like. Not only just what the game itself would look like, because we didn't come from a game development background necessarily, but we were just really curious as to how would the experience be to not only make a game like this and, and inject your personal experiences into this interactive form, but also how would that process impact the creators of a game like that? You know, what would the process look like to essentially take so much time and energy and put it into something in, in as a creative endeavor and also as a, as a healing endeavor? Yeah. And so we, we contacted uh, Ryan and Josh and went out for a, a four-day shoot in Colorado where they're based. And, uh, and that was just the beginning of 18 months of filming. You watched it twice, Florence. I did. I watched it twice. Um, I had heard about that dragon cancer through the game news field, and um, I was really curious what what were you know either those of you who worked on the movie or those of you who worked on the game. What were you hoping to have people feel when they were watching this movie? Because for me, I mean, I felt extremely devastated watching you guys go through this process and um, and I'm honestly struggling to find a way to put that into words uh, just because it's I mean I could I could feel I could sense the pain mm -hmm. through the movie mm -hmm. well I think um, for us one thing that was uh, I mean David just explained what we were intrigued mm -hmm. by in terms of the fact that Ryan Amy and Josh were trying to kind of document a real life experience and a very profound real life experience in a medium that usually isn't associated with that kind of documentation at, at all. And so we were intrigued by that whole process they were involved in. Um, but I think one thing we realized once we started filming and once it became clear that we were um, ourselves involved in a long-term project in, in filming with these guys is that um, in some ways our documentary um, had you know, it was part of a similar uh, similar mission and goal that um, Ryan and Amy and Josh had, which was to um, start conversations around these topics of bereavement and grief and terminal illness in a way that, you know, in, in Western society at least, um, just doesn't usually happen. You know, like death and bereavement and terminal mm -hmm. illness tends to be something we keep very much in our private lives and that it, it almost seems like it's taboo to, be, to speak about publicly. And so... We were amazed by the fact that Ryan, Amy, and Josh had set out to kind of talk about this intensely personal experience in public. Mm. Um, but we soon realized as we were working on this documentary that the documentary itself was also part of that process of, you know, bring it started, hopefully starting these conversations around um, a topic that people don't, mm -hmm. you know, aren't accustomed to being brought face to face with. And so I think, um, um, yeah, with, with the film, we were really hoping to to do that and then also to kind of shed light on the fact that there's that the video game medium uh is now a kind of serious artistic medium yes. people like right. this right. team are doing are creating serious profound artworks in it in the same way you might write a novel or a poem or or create or paint a painting um and so we were kind of interested in being able to document a turning point that seems to be happening in the gaming industry right now so yeah i, I think oh, go ahead uh, I'm sorry, I wanted to actually ask a question about the game development. So, uh, you know, I do believe the games are a form of art, and I'm very curious where the decision came to use this sort of polygonal art that is used in the game. The, fa was there, the faceless kind of Yeah, characters. was there more beneath it? Were you trying to, I don't know, illustrate some... What was the choice behind to use, you know, polygonal <laughs> art for this game? Um... You know, <laughs> exploring uh, an art style that, okay, so to be frank, it was partly inspired by just my own limitations. I wanted to be part of the process. Okay. And so, you know, stepping into that, that role of artist, where I'm typically a programmer, I wanted to be, it to be something that people could connect with. Mm -hmm. um, early, um, <laughs> early prototypes or like early demos of the art were kind of creepy um, because I couldn't get there. And there's this idea of this uncanny valley in, in animation where the more realistic you try to get, if you're not able to get there, it looks kind of odd and creepy. And so if we took that back and took like a really strong art style, um, we found that we could be more expressionistic 
um, in our impressionism, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and, and so like taking a, um, a, a polygonal approach allowed us to all have a unified art style. Um, but then also we found that when you don't put faces in, um, but you have a very strong soundtrack, a very yeah. strong audio landscape, it makes the whole uh, game look better and people fill in, this, fill in the blanks. Um, and so what we found through sharing it is that people actually identified with us more um, because they were able to insert their own experience into it. Right. Yeah, and I think lighting plays an important role as well. Um, we tried to fill all of the environments with a lot of light and and color and it adds a, a softness to the polygonal style that allows it to not feel um, really harsh or jagged, but it's much more warm and inviting um, kind of feel to it. Josh, did you do the, the art or did you do, what was your role on the game? Um, early on helping establish the art direction, but also design and programming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We also have a lighting specialist named Ryan Cousins and he really came in and he, he really um, brought a really nice theatrical feel to the lighting. Um, I did a lot of the modeling, the sculpting uh, of the piece, and then we also have a composer and another developer. And I think we've learned, especially f you know, because of Minecraft, that realism isn't necessarily always what you need to go for mm -hmm. in a game. In a game like this, uh, which is so emotionally uh, s strong, I think it's mm -hmm. interesting to have this style uh, this more expressionistic uh, uh, style. It's just, it's quite beautiful. And what, it, it really does show gaming as an art. The, 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 I mean, it, is there, tell me about the gameplay. Well, the gameplay is a lot more like, uh, say, Myst uh, without the puzzles. Uh, one thing that we really wanted was to make this accessible to players. And um, early on when we tried to do dual stick type um, movement or free movement, um, it was just really difficult to navigate for non-gamers. Right. And so as we were anticipating where this could go, uh, we wanted to make a 3D environment because that was important to me as far as the sense of immersion. Um, but we also wanted the controls to be simple. And so we really wanted it to be something that you could just navigate with your mouse. Um, and so that's why we took a kind of unconventional approach to 3D um, navigation in games. Um, it's just to allow other everybody to be able to play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so a player will kind of navigate the space and, and learn about Joel, learn about our family. And then there are little games that happen in the sort of magical realism space of the game. But I think for as normally you might see um, the storyline there to sort of support the mechanic of the gameplay. In our game, any mechanics of gameplay are there just to support the storyline. Right. They're more like metaphor right. than right. they are um, mm -hmm. the point of what's happening in that moment. Mm -hmm. Um, now, I remember watching the documentary, I saw that you had your sons record a lot of audio as uh, part of the narrative. And I was curious, um, there were a couple scenes where I heard you mention that the boys were actually looking forward to recording. I hope I didn't uh, misread that. But I'm curious to know if, uh, if this is something that has sort of become a time capsule for your family yeah. of this just very yeah. like difficult time and if it's something that you still go through with your sons who are still very young yeah um it has been something that um i felt like they were a little young to sort of <clears throat> maybe proactively handle their grief and decide like oh here's what i want to do with my grief and here's how i want to honor joel but they loved being a part of what we were doing um they love that our family has has made this game for joel and so, yeah, they recorded audio for the game. They actually drew pictures that are used in, in one part of the game. And they, they have gone through and played it. And, you know, they've played it a few times, enough times that once recently, our middle son, Isaac, was playing through the game and making jokes throughout the whole thing, like just sort of irreverent, like mm -hmm. silly sort of jokes. And it, it almost felt funny. But then I thought, oh, this is so much a part of his life that he can mm -hmm. be silly playing it. Mm -hmm. But then at the very end of the game, there's credits that show photos of Joel. So he was so funny, silly through the whole thing. And then he got to the credits and just cried. And Ryan came over and held him. And, and they watched the photos together and talked. And so um, I think the game has just been part of their life mm -hmm. in this season. Yeah. The reaction has been very strong. You raised $40,000 on Kickstarter two years ago. Uh, I, I know the filmmakers have also raised money on Kickstarter for the film. So clearly you've tapped into something. Sorry, guys. How much did you raise? Yeah, we raised over 100000 I'm sorry, 100000 40000 for the yeah, film. I got it switched around. 
So yeah. that's remarkable. I mean, that shows that you were doing something that people were, I think, great that you used Kickstarter because it really showed an interest in this. Well, even more remarkable that the people that supported the Kickstarter also supported it with their, their own stories. Yeah. And so you'll see artwork in the game. You'll see messages from backers in the game. You'll see letters. Um, so, so people have really like told their story through what we've done. And so, yeah, Kickstarter backed content in the game was sort of our way to show that, like, well, we can intimately tell the, the story of our one family. We can give sort of a glimpse of, of the fact that it affects so many more families and, and give them a chance to memorialize people they loved in this sort of space. Yeah, and a lot of, a lot of people, um, critics and, and game players, uh, reviews that we've seen on Steam, People say that um, the Kickstarter content that's in the game is actually their favorite part. Mm -hmm. uh, walking through the hallway and seeing over 150 cards help them realize that um, this one specific story is really um, applies to so many other yeah. families. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm so thrilled that you could join us, and I'm, I'm also pleased that the game is has been such a success there. But I, I should add that you just put out a Linux version of this on Steam as well. So it's now Mac, Windows, Linux, Ouya. Yeah. Uh, and if you, you can find out more at, at the website, which is uh, thatdragoncancer.com. And the, the movie uh, has already become, got a lot of attention. It premiered just March 18th, so it, yesterday, right? Uh, and you've been invited to film festivals. That's, it's very exciting. Uh, yeah, so the movie, you can find out more info about the, uh, where you can see the film at thankyouforplayingfilm.com. It was right. actually released theatrically in New York and L.A. yesterday mm -hmm. um, and is going to be released on all digital platforms on March 29th, so it'll be very easy to watch online then. Nice. So a couple of ways you can take this uh, journey with Ryan and Amy and Josh and... Uh, Thank you. I mean, it really, it's really showing that this is an art form. I think you, I think you said that yeah, exactly absolutely. right. That uh, gaming isn't just about playing games. It can be about life and some serious uh, subjects mm -hmm. as well. And I will say I haven't been, uh, just credit to you all, I have not been so emotionally invested <laughs> in something like game like this before. And um, I think it's incredible. And thank yeah. you guys for sharing your story yeah. with the world because I think... I think it's a beautiful story of life. Ryan and Amy Green, Joel's parents, uh, Josh Larson, one of the developers. We also thank you, David uh, Asit and Malika Zuhali, the filmmakers. The film is at thankyouforplayingfilm.com, uh, and it is in theatrical release now in two cities, and I'm sure there'll be many ways to see it soon. And the, the game, thatdragoncancer.com, and you can get it right now on Steam. Thanks to all of you uh, for being here. We really appreciate it. Wow. It's, 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 I think, you know, cancer has become such a part of our society and our mm -hmm. lives, and we all know somebody who's gone through it. I mm -hmm. think that it's uh, in some ways cathartic for people to see the film and to, to play the mm -hmm. game because it, it is, it's personal Absolutely. for everybody now, right? Thank you, uh, Florence, for backing me up on that one. <laughs> I think I could do it by myself. Ooh. Ooh.